The Swift Programming Language 5.6 Edition, copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Functions. Functions are self-contained chunks of code that perform a specific task. You give a function a name that identifies what it does, and this name is used to call the function to perform its task when needed. Swift's unified function syntax is flexible enough to express anything from a simple C-style function with no parameter names to a complex objective C-style method with names and argument labels for each parameter. Parameters can provide default values to simplify function calls and can be passed as in-out parameters, which modify a passed variable once the function has completed its execution. Every function in Swift has a type, consisting of the function's parameter types and return type. You can use this type like any other type in Swift, which makes it easy to pass functions as parameters to other functions, and to return functions from functions. Functions can also be written within other functions to encapsulate useful functionality within a nested function scope. Defining and calling functions. When you define a function, you can optionally define one or more named typed values that the function takes as input, known as parameters. You can also optionally define a type of value that the function will pass back as output when it is done, known as its return type. Every function has a function name, which describes the task that the function performs. To use a function, you call that function with its name and pass it input values known as arguments that match the types of the function's parameters. A function's arguments must always be provided in the same order as the function's parameter list. The function in this example is called greet person because that's what it does. It takes a person's name as input and returns a greeting for that person. To accomplish this, you define one input parameter, a string value called person, and a return type of string, which will contain a greeting for that person. All of this information is rolled up into the function's definition, which is prefixed with the func keyword. You indicate the function's return type with the return arrow, a hyphen followed by a right angle bracket which is followed by the name of the type to return. The definition describes what the function does, what it expects to receive, and what it returns when it's done. The definition makes it easy for the function to be called unambiguously from elsewhere in your code. You call the greet person function by passing it a string value after the person argument label, such as greet person Anna. Because the function returns a string value, greet person can be wrapped in a call to the print function to print that string and see its return value as shown above. Note, the print function does not have a label for its first argument and its other arguments are optional because they have a default value. These variations on function syntax are discussed below in function argument labels and parameter names and default parameter labels. The body of the greet person function starts by defining a new string constant called greeting and setting it to a simple greeting message. This greeting is then passed back out of the function using the return keyword. In the line of code that says return greeting, the function finishes its execution and returns the current value of greeting. You can call the greet person function multiple times with different input values. This example shows what happens if it's called with an input value of Anna and an input value of Brian. The function returns a tailored greeting in each case. To make the body of this function shorter, you can combine the message creation and the return statement into one line. Function parameters and return values. Function parameters and return values are extremely flexible and swift. You can define anything from a simple utility function with a single unnamed parameter to a complex function with expressive parameter names and different parameter options. Functions without parameters. Functions are not required to define input parameters. Here is a function with no input parameters, which always returns the same string message whenever it is called. The function definition still needs parentheses after the function's name, even though it doesn't take any parameters. The function's name is also followed by an empty pair of parentheses when the function is called. Functions with multiple parameters. Functions can have multiple input parameters which are written within the function's parentheses separated by commas. This function takes a person's name and whether they have already been greeted as input and returns an appropriate greeting for that person. 
you call the greet person already greeted function by passing it both a string argument value labeled person and a bool argument value labeled already greeted in parentheses separated by commas. Note that this function is distinct from the greet person function shown in an earlier section. Although both functions have names that begin with greet, the greet person already greeted function takes two arguments, but the greet person function takes only one. Functions without return values. Functions are not required to define a return type. Here is a version of the greet person function which prints its own string value rather than returning it. Because it does not need to return a value, the function's definition does not include the return arrow or a return type. Note. Strictly speaking, this version of the greet person function does still return a value, even though no return value is defined. Functions without a defined return type return a special value of type void. This is simply an empty tuple, which is written with empty parentheses. The return value of a function can be ignored when it is called. The first function, print and count string, prints a string and then returns its character count as an int. The second function, print without counting string, calls the first function but ignores its return value. When the second function is called, the message is still printed by the first function, but the return value is not used. Note, return values can be ignored, but a function that says it will return a value must always do so. A function with the defined return type cannot allow control to fall out of the bottom of the function without returning a value, and attempting to do so will result in a compile time error. Functions with multiple return values. You can use a tuple type as the return type for a function to return multiple values as part of one compound return value. This example defines a function called minmax array, which finds the smallest and largest numbers in an array of integer values. The minmax array function returns a tuple containing two int values. These values are labeled min and max so that they can be accessed by name when querying the function's return value. The body of the minmax array function starts by setting two working variables called current min and current max to the value of the first integer in the array. The function then iterates over the remaining values in the array and checks each value to see if it is smaller or larger than the values of current min and current max respectively. Finally, the overall minimum and maximum values are returned as a tuple of two integer values. Because the tuples member values are named as part of the function's return type, they can be accessed with dot syntax to retrieve the minimum and maximum found values. Note that the tuple's members do not need to be named at the point that the tuple is returned from the function because their names are already specified as part of the function's return type. Optional tuple return types. If the tuple type to be returned from a function has the potential to have no value for the entire tuple, you can use an optional tuple return type to reflect the fact that the entire tuple can be nil. You write an optional tuple return type by placing a question mark after the tuple's type's closing parentheses, such as int int parenthesis question mark or string int bool parenthesis question mark. Note, an optional tuple type such as int int question mark is different from a tuple that contains optional types such as int question mark int question mark. With an optional tuple type, the entire tuple is optional, not just each individual value within the tuple. The min-max array function shown earlier returns a tuple containing two int values. However, the function does not perform any safety checks on the array it is passed. If the array argument contains an empty array, the min-max array function, as defined previously, would trigger a runtime error when attempting to access array index 0. To handle an empty array safely, write the minmax array function with an optional tuple return type and return a value of nil when the array is empty. You can use optional binding to check whether this version of the minmax array function returns an actual tuple value or nil. Functions with an implicit return. If the entire body of the function is a single expression, the function implicitly returns that expression. For example, both functions shown here have the same behavior. The entire definition of the greeting for function is the greeting message that it returns, which means it can use this shorter form. 
the another greeting for function returns the same greeting message using the return keyword like a longer function. Any function that you write as just one return line can omit the return. As you'll see in shorthand getter declaration, property getters can also use an implicit return. Note, the code you write as an implicit return value needs to return some value. For example, you cannot use print 13 as an implicit return value. However, you can use a function that never returns like fatal error as an implicit return value because Swift knows that the implicit return does not happen. Function argument labels and parameter names. Each function parameter has both an argument label and a parameter name. The argument label is used when calling the function. Each argument is written in the function call with its argument label before it. The parameter name is used in the implementation of the function. By default, parameters use their parameter name as their argument label. All parameters must have unique names. Although it is possible for multiple parameters to have the same argument label, unique argument labels help make your code more readable. Specifying argument labels. You write an argument label before the parameter name separated by a space. Here is a variation of the greet person function that takes a person's name and hometown and returns a greeting. The use of argument labels can allow a function to be called in an expressive, sentence-like manner while still providing a function body that is readable and clear in intent. Omitting argument labels. If you do not want an argument label for a parameter, write an underscore instead of an explicit argument label for that parameter. If a parameter has an argument label, the argument must be labeled when you call the function. Default parameter values. You can define a default value for any parameter in a function by assigning a value to the parameter after that parameter's type. If a default value is defined, you can omit that parameter when calling the function. Place parameters that do not have default values at the beginning of a function's parameter list before the parameters that have default values. Parameters that do not have default values are usually more important to the function's meaning. Writing them first makes it easier to recognize that the same function is being called, regardless of whether any default parameters are omitted. Variadic parameters. A variadic parameter accepts zero or more values of a specified type. You use a variadic parameter to specify that the parameter can be passed a varying number of input values when the function is called. Write variadic parameters by inserting three period characters after the parameter type's name. The values passed to a variadic parameter are made available within the function's body as an array of the appropriate type. For example, a variadic parameter with a name of numbers and a type of double dot 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 is made available within the function's body as a constant array called numbers of type array of double. This example calculates the arithmetic mean, also known as the average, for a list of numbers of any length. A function can have multiple variadic parameters. The first parameter that comes after the, a variadic parameter must have an argument label. The argument label makes it unambiguous which arguments are passed to the variadic parameter and which arguments are passed to the parameters that come after the variadic parameter. In-out parameters. Function parameters are constants by default. Trying to change the value of a function parameter from within the body of that function results in a compile time error. This means that you cannot change the value of a parameter by mistake. If you want a function to modify a parameter's value and you want those changes to persist after the function call is ended, define that parameter as an in-out parameter instead. You write an in-out parameter by placing the in-out keyword right before a parameter's type. An in-out parameter has a value that's passed into the function is modified by the function and is passed out of the function to replace the original value. For a detailed discussion of the behavior of in-out parameters and associated compiler optimizations, see in-out parameters. You can only pass a variable as the argument for an in-out parameter. You cannot pass a constant or a literal value as the argument because constants and literals cannot be modified. You place an ampersand directly before a variable's name when you pass it as an argument to an in-out parameter to indicate that it can be modified by the function. Note, in-out parameters cannot have default values and variadic parameters cannot be marked as in-out. Here is an example of a function called swap2ints, 
that has two in-out integer parameters, a and b. The swap two ints function simply swaps the value of b into a and the value of a into b. The function performs this swap by storing the value of a in a temporary constant called temporary a, assigning the value of b to a, and then assigning temporary a to b. You can call the swap two ints function with two variables of type int to swap their values. Note that the names of some int and another int are prefixed with an ampersand when they are passed to the swap two ints function. The example shows that the original values of some int and another int are modified by swap two ints function, even though they were originally defined outside of the function. Note, in out parameters are not the same as returning a value from a function. The swap two ints example above does not define a return type or return a value but it still modifies the value of some int and another int. In-out parameters are an alternative way for a function to have an effect outside of the scope of its function body. Function types. Every function has a specific function type made up of the parameter types and the return type of the function. This example defines two simple mathematical functions called add two ints and multiply two ints. These functions each take two int values and return an int value, which is the result of performing an appropriate mathematical operation. The type of both of these functions is int int returning int. This can be read as a function that has two parameters, both of type int, and that returns a value of type int. Here is another example for a function with no parameters or return value. The type of this function is empty parentheses, to void or a function that has no parameters and returns void. Using function types. You use function types just like any other types in Swift. For example, you can define a constant or variable to be of a function type and assign an appropriate function to that variable. This can be read as define a variable called math function, which has a type of a function that takes two int values and returns an int value set this new variable to refer to the function called add two ints. The add two ints function has the same type as the math function variable, and so this assignment is allowed by Swift's type checker. You can now call the assigned function with the name math function. A different function with the same matching type can be assigned to the same variable in the same way as for non-function types. As with any other type, you can leave it to Swift to infer the function type when you assign a function to a constant or variable. You can use a function type such as int int arrow int as a parameter type for another function. This enables you to leave some aspects of the function's implementation for the function's caller to provide when the function is called. This is an example to print the results of math functions from above. This example defines a function called print math result, which has three parameters. The first parameter is called math function and is of type int int returning int. You can pass any function of that type as the argument for this first parameter. The second and third parameters are called a and b and are both of type int. These are used as the two input values for the provided math function. When print math result is called, it is passed the add two ints function and the integer values three and five. It calls the provided function with the values three and five and prints out the result of eight. The role of print math result is to print the result of a call to a math function of an appropriate type. It does not matter what that function's implementation actually does. It matters only that the function is of the correct type. This enables print math result to hand off some of its functionality to the caller of the function in a type safe way. Function types as return types. You can use a function type as the return type of another function. You do this by writing a complete function type immediately after the return arrow of the returning function. This example defines two simple functions called step forward and step backward. The step forward function returns a value one more than its input value, and the step backward function returns a value one less than its input value. Both functions are of type int returning int. Here is a function called choose step function backward, whose return type is int returning int. The choose step function backward function returns the step forward function or the step backward function based on a Boolean parameter called backward. You can now use choose step forward backward 
to obtain a function that will step in one direction or the other. The example determines whether a positive or negative step is needed to move a variable called current value progressively closer to zero. Current value has an initial value of three, which means that current value greater than zero returns true, causing choose step function backward to return the step backward function. A reference to the returned function is stored in a constant called move nearer to zero. Now that move nearer to zero refers to the correct function, it can be used to count to zero. Nested functions. All of the functions you have encountered so far in this chapter have been examples of global functions, which are defined at a global scope. You can also define functions inside the bodies of other functions known as nested functions. Nested functions are hidden from the outside world by default, but can still be called and used by their enclosing function. An enclosing function can also return one of its nested functions to allow the nested function to be used in another scope. You can rewrite the choose step function backward example above to use and return nested functions.